Uh, look, I think I think collaboration is the mother of all growth strategies that every business should implement, and it shouldn't be the only growth strategy, but it definitely should be one. Um, when I when I look at competition, I think of opportunity. Hello, I'm your host, Evelyn Clark, and this is the Six Star Business Podcast, where we have conversations with amazing, incredible people all about what it takes to be six star, going beyond the status quo, doing things differently, and how they bring purpose, love, and impact into their businesses every day. Well, I'm so excited. I get to interview you, Joanne. How cool. I'm excited too. Always (laughs) always great conversations with you, Ev. Yeah. (laughs) Likewise. And um, when you put your hand up to be interviewed, like with the, the other co-hosts, I was like, oh, can't wait for this one. So thank you. Thank you. I love your energy and your smile. And yeah, this will be fun. So, uh, and, and I love the fact that you're always up for a challenge and you're always up for something new and exciting. And that's, that's what this is. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I'm here to interview you and this is about you and it's all about being six star. Uh, so how about we let our listeners into a little bit of your world, like who, get to know who you are, just like I ask all the other guests, where are you in the world? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? And what's something you like to do when you're not busy serving people? Mm. Who am I? Joanne Brooks. I am on the Gold Coast. I live with my husband. Um, I am the owner and founder of uh, Navigate Biz. Navigate Biz uh, was formed in 2017 and and its first remit was to put a dent in the failure rates of businesses and that was how why it first established back then and it's it's gone through a significant evolution i guess you would say so over the last five years we've created an amazing amazing amount of programs really just pulling out of mine and my business my co-founders heads of what we've learned over our collective 50 years in business i don't know 40 industries 12 countries there's a lot of metrics there so we've We've learnt a lot over those times. Have we had success? Yes. Have we had failure? You bet. Have we learned a lot from them? Absolutely. Um, and then in May this year, our, my business partner and I decided that we needed to, he needed to go on and do the other things that he was deeply passionate about. So we, we parted ways and he very generously left me with Navigate to do what I wanted to do with it. So it's, it's had a complete, as you would have seen, it's had a complete rebrand, re- new narrative, new focus. And so I've always wanted to be able to speak to women, women in business, and that that is whether they uh, own a business or work for one because, you know, I've seen it, I've experienced it, our own, the biases that we face, our own self-imposed barriers and those barriers that are imposed on us. And I really want to use my experience of what I've learned over those long, that long period of time to help women to understand that they have a choice they deserve to be happy. They deserve to be successful. And let's find a way for them to do that. And so that's that's what I do um, daily now, constantly creating new programs, talking to people. You know, and I've got everything from free programs to boot camps and now um, newly uh, being able to introduce overseas master's degrees that are just something like I've never seen before. And that And not all of those products are for everyone, but there's a place for everyone to find a spot. I guess you could say. What do I like to do when I'm not doing much? I actually love listening and reading fiction. Uh, I'm an avid reader. I find fiction, I've heard a lot of business mentors say, no, I only read the nonfiction, go do the business stuff and all those sort of things. And I go, actually, I call rubbish on that. It needs to be a spread of everything. And I find a lot of joy in the fiction that I read because I actually can align the narrative of the stories, like, you know, why, why this person's going through this terrible experience in this fictional book and what's their thought processes and how they went about it and so there's a lot of lot of learnings in there that you can apply to business and life anyway but I just I love losing myself in a good book that's that's my fun space ah uh, I can't agree more and you know those fiction stories came from someone who lives in oh, non-fiction life yeah. it's still elements of people's lived experiences um, yeah, for me, I, I also believe that we need to let our minds uh, go into different parts of that. First of all, not stay in our left brains all the time, but we also need to play in fantasy. And it's really important that we do that or else we, there's no book. But where do we find the little sparks of inspiration or the joy or the belief yeah. that, hey, we can shoot for the moon? Like That fantasy play in our minds is really yeah. important. 
creativity is something mm. that um, I'm, it's a big part of my values. So I'm just going to grab a book. I've started reading this book, Big Magic. This is a lady who wrote Eat, Love, Pray mm-hmm. that became that big movie. And mm-hmm. I didn't realise Eat, Love, Pray was her story personally. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. fiction. Oh. How, how would I not know that? But this is a book that has really sparked my creative thinking and and it's a and it's a story and I love non-fiction books and Robin Sharma does the same sort of thing they create stories a bit like the old Aesop's fables that I grew up with there's always a message behind the story and I really enjoy those sort of um uh, business growth books that mm. and big magic oh man I'm I'm in love with that to the point Hopefully this doesn't get shown before Christmas, but this is my daughter's uh, Christmas present because <laughs> I think she would get a lot out of it. Well, that's so – what a great uh, endorsement. I haven't read the book yet. I've known about it, yeah, but, you know, with, with a with book list a mile long, it just hasn't got there yet. Yeah. So, um, so I'm listening to it, but I, as you know, when I love a book, I go buy it and I listen to it. Mm. So that's sitting there on my desk as I listen to it. Mm. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Um, I'd love to know a bit about your journey. Would you like, sure. care to share what, what's, what's been the journey that's brought you to here? You mentioned in your intro that you and your co-founder had 40 years combined experience. I mean, there's a lot of learned experience and yeah, lived bet. experience and mm. everything. What would you like to share about the journey that's brought you to here? Sure, uh, I'd love to share that. And and I've been doing, interestingly, I've been doing a lot of deep thinking because of this uh, in the last week to 10 days ago, and I've had a few epiphanies, which was quite interesting. So the thing that I know, and you've heard this piece before, I know um, which was a big lesson for me, but I didn't connect with it until late 2016, was when I was 18 and I left school. Um, and that was the time, you know, that was in 1980, it was a good while ago lived on the Gold Coast, always wanted to go to university, and my dad said to me, that's not an option for you, you can't do that. And, you know, those days that's what you went with. You you, you know, you went along with what your parents told you. Um, and he and I was an incredibly shy person, so different to today, it's not funny. So you couldn't look at me sideways. Um, I think my first boyfriend was at 21, couldn't talk to boys. It was such a different person, uh, very, very shy. To the point that my book, when I write it, when I get it finished, is called The Girl in the Cupboard because that's where I spent most of my childhood was playing in the cupboard. Anyway, back to the age of 18. And so my dad said, no university for you, Joanne. You will go get a job within two weeks of leaving school, go sit the bank exams. And in those days you sat them on a Saturday, went and did that, thinking, job done, great, I'll just wait. Yeah, no. Uh, he said to me, you need to ring every branch manager that for the bank that you sat with in the local area until you get a job. Now, the thought of the ultimate cold calling, because my goodness, what am I selling? Can't possibly be me. <laughs> uh, the thought of that was just mind numbing. Uh, but blow me down, I got a job in two weeks. And it was really the lesson I learned there was when the branch manager said to me, you didn't get the best score, but you persisted and you stood out. And so you are the one that I chose and didn't think much of it at the time. But it obviously had a massive impact on me because the reflection that I've had in the last 10 days was every place in my career and in starting my businesses, I've always known the only way that I can make a change is with me proactively doing something. There is no point sitting back and waiting. So I spent 17 years in the Commonwealth Bank and I proactively chased promotion after promotion learning new things, put me on a course, I want to do this, I'll put my hand up. I remember getting the first job um, in Brisbane out of the Gold Coast when the Commonwealth Bank introduced computers and they said, you know how to use one? Yes. Had no idea how to use one. And so it was a computer-based job on use, dot matrix, the old printing, Yeah, and I, I just learned, I just taught, found a way to do it, right? And everywhere in my corporate career, um, if I wanted a pay rise, I would write a business case as to why I deserved it, what I've done, what I'm going to do, this is what I want, and I would go and negotiate and I would apply for promotions. I remember going to the head of the bank at the state manager at one time and said, I want that job. Well, you're not you're not um, qualified for it yet, Joanne. Well, can I take that one and then you, I'll learn and get that one? He said, well, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, you go do that. 
So those sort of things was such a deep lesson for me. And so I started my first business for the purpose of um, having much more time, flexibility and money for my daughter, which on the face of it sounds like a great purpose and reason to start a business, but it was such the wrong mindset of starting a business. And thank goodness I had a mentor that gave me a little bit of a slap around the back of the head and said, um, Joanne, what are you doing? You are not you are not doing the things that you need to do to build and grow this business. Because I was just sitting there waiting for people to come, right, because I've been in the industry for 20 years by that point in banking and expected people just to come. Well, we know they just don't. And thank goodness I had that mentor to give me a bit of a, a buff around the head. And so the start of my business journey was a bit rocky. Uh, I've I've faced a number of things. I have uh, was given the opportunity to be the first of a franchise within the training sector, one of the first RTOs as a franchise, and helped them build that. He sold it, got bought by a company. They realised they shouldn't have bought it, so they shut us down. So I, had to, I lost a $2 million business and had to start again. And then I renamed that business, and the name was very tongue-in-cheek. It was There was no thought to it. Well, there was a little bit of thought. It was called T3 Australia. And the other company that I'd had, the franchise, had a number two in it. So I said, well, one better than you, up yours. Uh, Literally, that's why I came up with that name. And, you know, two years later, I got a trademark issue that T3 Australia was owned by a large corporate company. And they gave me, I don't know, 30 days to change it or they would shut me down. So I said, give me 60, went and changed the name. And that was a business, like I'd had by that point 30 years in some sort of business, um, commercial finance, et cetera. And I grew that new business to 30 million in about 18 months. Now, a lot of people look at that and go, wow, that's an overnight success. Well, no, that 20, 30, 20 odd years of working, of which the previous 10 have been business ownership, was getting all those ducks in a row and learning a bunch of things, right? To be, to be ready to collaborate with my competitors and grow a really substantial business. And we did some amazing things in there. Um, but we were heavily reliant on government funding and other um, partners. And I'll be the first to say I made some good decisions. I made some really poor decisions. And it, that resulted in that business being liquidated in 2016. And, you know, since then, which is literally, look, it's, it's literally, I'm going to say to you, it's six years to the day that I closed my business. Can you believe that? It was on the 17th of November, 2016. Wow, that's crazy. Um Took me five years to unwind that business, but my goodness, there has been some massive growth in me because I've taken ownership for what went wrong, loved the things that went well, and learnt a lot so that when Navigate um, arrived in 2017, the year later, um, I now I now know unreservedly what's not negotiable, what I will do, bless you, and what I won't do. Um, so it's it's been an amazing journey, and the journey continues. As, um, you know, I, I launched a new version of my business in June this year, uh, reframed it, re, rebranded it, and so there's been some much joy. But there's you know there's been some challenges. But that's life, right? That's business. That's just the way the cookie crumbles when you're in business. Um, yes, it, it is. It's uh, it's it's not a straight line. Uh, it's not a a uh, perfectly straight line trajectory going up. <laughs> not anything but, isn't it? Certainly not. No, uh, absolutely. When you were talking about your corporate years and how you applied yourself and, you know, tried to get promotions and everything, where did that tenacity come from? Did you have, was it inbuilt in you or did you have some model or frame that you, or person that you aspired to be like? Did you have just this sense that, no, I, I, I can do it, I want to do it? Where did that come mm. from? Do you know, I think, and this is, as I said, this has literally come to mind in the last 10 days or so because I've been doing a lot of thinking and thinking about writing a, a chapter for a book. Um, do you know, A, I think that lesson for my dad, it just stuck in the back of my head. But you know what, what I've, when I think of it, when I was reflecting all these things that have happened in the corporate world, and as you were asking about, it is that I've, I was such a quiet person and not noticed for such a long time. And that was in my personal life. Um, didn't have a great marriage and didn't have, um, I was so quiet and shy and didn't have a lot of confidence. And I think, you know what? I think just deep down, I just wanted better. I wanted better for me. And so I would say to you that, yeah, that lesson from my dad was profound, 
to the point that it just stuck inside, like it probably became part of my DNA, that even today I continue to learn. I'm always looking for new opportunities. And I think, you know what, I just want, I want, you know, it's all, am I writing these goals down in a journal somewhere? Not necessarily. They're often in here. Um, I often have them in a vision board, those sort of things. And so achieved, not achieved, why not? What can I do better? So I always have been, I just have noticed this pattern of always just wanted more, wanted better, not not from a greedy perspective. Yay, got that. Didn't quite get there. How can I do it better? Where, where can I move on and be better and provide more? You know, where can I give more? Where can I serve more? How can I give my family a, an improved lifestyle? Mm. Mm. It's um, it's exciting, you know, and and inspiring to hear you speak about this. What's been one of the biggest lessons through business ownership that you've learned? Do you know, uh, I was literally, I was on a um, podcast yesterday being interviewed and I spoke about this particular instance and you've heard this before. On the day six years ago that I um, announced the business would close, this was in a room. I had 100 staff by that point, four officers, and I had most of them in a room on the day everybody else on, we didn't, didn't have Zoom then, on a conference call mm-hmm. and explaining to them that today was the day we were shutting the business. And for whatever reason, it just came into my head, crikey, I've got all these offices with furniture in them. So I just put it out there and said, of any of you who have now lost your job, would you be prepared to help me move the furniture so I can sell it? And as I said yesterday, 80 to 90% of them stayed for a week and did that. Now, that that gives me goosebumps even today, even nearly brings me to tears because I had no idea of the impact that I had on people and that how closely they watch. Like I, I had just come up with the idea that every morning, those that whichever office I was in, I would walk through the office and say hello to every single person. And I'd done that for ages, the whole time that that business existed. How are you doing? What's happening? It wasn't about what are you doing today, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. It was a genuine hello, how are you? How was your night? You know, blah, 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 all those sort of things. How are you feeling? And I had no concept of the impact and that your team are always watching. And that was... That was heart wrenching, absolutely heart wrenching. And so, you know, there was, I'd done a lot of lot of fun things with that team. I think I've shared with you before that the, I had said to the team, the first million dollars that came into the bank again, I promised them a, a first class flight down to Sydney, first class lunch at Circular Key, and that happened. And it eventuated that it was cheaper for me to hire a jet plane than send them first class in Qantas or whoever was going couldn't get all the seats in one spot. So I did that and it was a complete surprise. And so for me that was so, so much fun but so wonderful to be able to share that success and celebrate our wins because it was a massive win. We'd struggled, we'd had the trademark issue, we'd started again, blah, blah, blah. And so you, I just had no sense of how deep an impact that had and how deep an impact it had that I actually cared about my team and would say hello every day and so when they moved all the furniture at no pay but their their first concern when I said we were closing they it was like it was like one of those football huddles with a coach in the middle I had all these people around me are you okay Joe because I'm crying and all those sort of things and I went I've just I've just sacked you all you know the month before Christmas and I felt so guilty about doing that and yet their first concern was me man mind-blowing So people matter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. They do. They're people, right? They yeah. have cons- They have fears. They have joys. They have wins. They have failures. doesn't matter what it is. I, I don't care what it is, whether, you know, your dog died or, you know, you, you didn't have enough money to, to buy your kid's tuck shop. The, the challenges that we all face are deep. Mm. And so mm. the opportunity to be caring, with your team, and that team mm. is your staff, your contractors, your clients, your support, everybody. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of effort, right? Mm. It really doesn't. Mm. 
Um, how has your journey impacted your daughter? Because you're you're an amazing entrepreneur, go getter. You're full of energy, and you've achieved so much. You mentioned that you started your business when your daughter was born. Um, yeah. I'm not sure exactly how old she is now, but what's the impact been on her? I, I'm fascinated yeah. to hear this. Again, this was an epiphany, and I have shared this little story with you before. She's 26 now. Okay. And um, a confident young woman. Um, she's done really well in corporate life uh, with no degree. She is just a smart and she's a go-getter. And she does the, she does exact, exactly what I've done. Puts in a business case for promotion and pay rises and things like that. Um, I, I remember during COVID, she was working for a, a global company and she was one of the first um, to be stood down when, COVID, when we all shut down. But um, during that period, they... Um, provided her with a fully scholarship MBA, which was incredible. And she was the first to go back to that corporate. But during that hiatus, that period of time, she just, she's in marketing, she decided she would start a business. And I rang her and I said, I am just so proud of you that you think this is a really good time to start a business. And I said, let me reaffirm for you, it is a really good time to start a business because if anybody, any business is going to succeed while we're all closed down in COVID, you've got to get out and sell a market. And so this is an ideal. And she was incredibly busy. Um, and she her comment was, well, look at who taught me, Mum. And I just went, oh, all right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Goosebumps, right? Mm -hmm. And I just went, oh, again, I had no concept. You know, they're always watching. We hear this all the time about Parents, you know, they're always watching and the kids picking up the swear words and the things that we do that are funny and not so, not so good examples. But, man, they absorb a lot. And, she, you know, she saw a lot of lot of stuff go down with the businesses. Um, she saw me working hard. She saw me with determination. She saw me in a fetal position on the floor. She saw me pick myself up and get going again. And I just was oblivious again to the impact and so I have to say I'm super proud of her she's turned out okay <laughs> that's okay amazing amazing young woman that's it's wonderful and it's interesting because we talk about impact you know and, and being conscious of our impact and yet yep. you've made this impact on your daughter and in the business all these staff with it without even being consciously aware of it even though I guess at the time you were um, conscious of being kind and, and connecting with them and, you know, all of that. But you just didn't understand or see, and no, nor do we ever, the depth, the depth. Of, yeah. mm. of, of what it meant for them. And I I think it's those moments where shit hits the fan or, or something happens that you actually get to see the other side, like the mirror gets held yeah. up yeah. and you exactly. see it. Mm. What Very a nice cool. gift. What a very, oh, very cool. A beautiful gift. Beautiful. Yeah. And something I don't ignore or I'm not oblivious to anymore. I'm I'm so much more mindful and aware and present of the impact that we the impact we can all make. Like I'm nothing special, I don't think. We can all do this mm. because it's simply with the mindset of how do we how can we serve? Yeah. How can we give to others? But I will say to you that one of the things that I've learned that I stand by is I, as I mentioned before, I absolutely know what's not negotiable. So my giving is not to everybody. It's people who I know align to why I do what I do and why they do what they do. Values and purpose are so important. Mm -hmm. And if people are not clear about it, that's okay. Happy to help them. That's part of what I do. Happy to help them define them. But if it's clear that they don't align, like I was saying this on the podcast yesterday, a lot of business owners and or people will chase things because, oh, it's great money, there's probably some great opportunity here, and they don't listen to that, that head, heart and gut alignment. They're not listening to it because head will give you the data from the research that you do about your decision. You've got to have data to make a decision. The heart is, does it feel right? It has to feel right. But the gut is, have I got good butterflies or scary? You know, warning, Will Robinson, don't go there. Mm. Um, and so too many people make decisions that they, they make decisions in fear because they think I've got to chase the money. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. What I know 
is when you make decisions based on values and purpose, the money will come. Mm. It comes mm. after. It's not the reason you do stuff, mm. I don't think. Yeah. You mentioned purpose. Now, this is obviously one of our favourite topics in, in, in our podcasts together. Uh, tell me how important it is uh, for us to find our purpose in business. Yeah. Well, as, as I've shared, there's, business can be quite a rocky road, right? And so I know during probably the six months before I liquidated this business, highly profitable, amazing team of people, making a difference. But I remember the last at least six months, I didn't want to get up out of bed and I did not want to go to work. Now, I didn't know why. I didn't know what was happening here. There were some things going on, legislation had changed, some partners had made some bad decisions. I'd made some bad, bad decisions. And this cumulative effect of it not feeling right just kept um, coming and coming at me. And I found, you know, found work really hard, incredibly hard. And I remember on reflection after we um, closed it, that I'd had these thoughts in my head, I can't get off the wheel because it's so big, it will be so impactful if I turn it off. So I kept ignoring it. But what I know was I'd lost my connection to purpose, why we were doing what we were doing. I'd lost it. I was making decisions not based on purpose and I wasn't sticking to what was not negotiable. And so I know when you are not aligned to why you do what you do and everybody will be different, um, and, and I also think um, sometimes your purpose can shift and change a bit, and that's actually okay, right, because things change and your priorities change. Um, opportunities come your way that get you thinking maybe slightly differently. You could be doing U-turns. You could be doing left turns, right turns, and that's okay. Uh, so it's something you should revisit regularly, your values and your purpose and all those sort of things. But, what, but having experienced what it's like to be running a business uh, that was not aligned at that those last six months, aligned to why I did what I do. I'd lost that purpose. It was incredibly hard. It was incredibly stressful. I wasn't well. I wasn't. I wasn't make. You, I know when you're in a stress situation, you can't make good decisions. You 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 might make decisions, and I fell for that. You might make decisions, but they're not necessarily the ones that are in the best interest of you or your business. And so, as again, this is one of the things that is absolutely not negotiable for me. You know, there's been a number of opportunities come across my desk in the last six to seven months and a few on my table now, and it's really weighing up. Like I actually use my, my values. It's almost like a checklist. Here's my values. Here's my opportunity. Does that align? Yep, cool. That one? Nope. Nope. Right. Well, that, that really helps me to make a good decision to go, actually, it, it, it could be a hard no for you or it could be not yet or it could look this way. But if you can use your values and the purpose and why you do what you do as a virtual checklist of moving forward with an opportunity, I think you'll find you'll make much better decisions and it'll sit more aligned with you and this head, heart and gut thing will be in alignment. I love that. What a, what a great nugget, a great thing. If people can figure out those values and actually use it as a boundary setter for themselves, yeah. you know, a, like you said, a virtual checklist. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how many of us, like you said, just see an opportunity or it comes their way and in the instant they just think, oh, money. Great. Or, awesome money. Yeah. 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 And that, that's it. And yet <laughs> hearing your story of where you got to with the business at 30 million and then having to liquidate for the reasons yeah. that, that it was. What a big lesson. Oh, massive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. massive lesson. Okay. And fin financially for me, I had to start again. Yeah. So wipe the slate completely clean. And was that a good, it's not a good experience. Nobody wishes that on anyone. Hmm. But uh, I have full confidence and I know, uh, as I said yesterday on this podcast, I have arrived home. I know that where I am is where I need to be and the money will come. The, the lo like I live an amazing lifestyle. I live on the Gold Coast. I live in a, a beautiful place. We are all healthy. I've got a 91-year-old mother thriving, a, you know, a husband 70, my daughter 20. We're all, and there's a lot to be grateful for, right? Mm. And so things will come because that's what we lost with the things. Yeah. We still experience amazing things and we live a great life. We go out. Yeah, we have a good, we have a good life. So there's a lot, so much to be grateful for. 
it, it feels like once you've got that lesson and you've tapped into your internal purpose and values, then everything became easy as in clarity. Jeez. You got clarity yes. and decision-making became easy and therefore better decisions bring happier, joy, more joyful experiences. You and bet. Now- like it's, it's a weight off your shoulders. Like there's the, I know and you know there's a lot of people out there in overwhelm they're concerned about what 2023 is going to look like. This recession's coming. The interest rates are crazy, you know, and not looking to stop anytime soon. But you know what? In every adversity, there is something to find that you can make something positive out of, like that pocket of gold, look for the silver lining, all that sort of stuff, mm. all those cliches. Mm. I fundamentally believe that is true. Yeah. There is, all, you know, nothing ever turns out, I don't feel, except for, you know, there's some trauma that happened, and I've suffered trauma, but that you, there's always a way forward. We always mm. find a way forward. And I think a big part of it is surround yourself with the right people, know what your values and purpose are, and ask for bloody help. You know, put your hand up. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be nervous of going, oh, it didn't work out. I need some help. Yeah. You know what? People just want to help. Yeah. That does it. That's our DNA. Well, That's, there are some rotten people out there. Get that. Mm, mm. But if you're surrounded by the right people, mm. you will find people to lift you and to help you transition through whatever you're going through. I, I believe in human nature. I, mm. I do too because it, 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 there's no other way to believe. There's no other way to be. Otherwise, you just live in fear and a very small, closed existence. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I want to switch gears a little bit now and ask you what does being six star mean to you? Do you know, it's not one better than five by any means. Uh, for me, achieving five is accumulation of your experiences on your learnings and your wins and your failures. But for me, you know, six is knowing what's not negotiable, living by your purpose and values, actually turning up. And what can you do differently? How can you serve differently to help others? Because as I said, when we, when we are in a a Serbian mindset, when we are there to help others from a genuine perspective of fulfilling my needs, my purpose, my values, six star just comes naturally. And for me, it's like, why do you like 600 star? It's not just one, as I said, one better than, than five. Hmm. It's, it's a mindset of, How can I serve? How can I make a difference for somebody? Is it by offering them one of my programs, recommending a great book? Is it connecting them with somebody that you go, actually, I'm not going to get anything out of this, but I I know Aveline can help you with this problem that you have or Sally or John or Bob? Because I know when when I do those things, I I will get it back 100-fold at some point, and I don't do it for the 100-fold giving back. I do it because... I know I can genuinely connect somebody and they're going to have a great experience with somebody. So six star for me is, yes, surrounding myself with the right people, knowing that I've got a band of people like yourself, like other people in the six star community, will pick me up if I need it and support me. But they'll also be aware of, oh, Sally, you need to go and speak to Joanne. And it's a genuine connection. It's not because they want some sort of referral fee or, you know, they're doing it from a, you know, selfish perspective that, oh, well, I'll get something back from that. It is always with the purpose of how can we do it differently? How can we stand out? How can we stand our ground and know that saying no is okay, saying yes is good as well, and that aligns absolutely to why we do what we do? When we are all in that alignment, can you think, like it just, it's like an escalation. It's like a fireworks goes off. It's, it exponentially increases the energy of the entire community, I think. Mm. One insight I got as you were speaking was that the, the focus of, you know, asking how can I serve and how can I do things differently and it not being for the benefit of what you're going to get from it. So, in other words, it's still not a transaction. It's not a no. what, what's in it for me. The, the, the insight is that it's actually a genuine care for others. Correct. Would, would it's you about agree? relationship building, right? Mm. Um, uh, absolutely. It's 
because I know that, like, if you think about any business that's successful, a business that's successful has this ripple effect on on the entire community. So if I can help a business to be successful, a person of a business to be successful, their family experience joy and an increased lifestyle. But so do their customers, so do their suppliers, so does the community. And it's just this beautiful ripple effect. So, you know, we're all talking about how do we change the world? Well, you know what? Starts there. Starts right here because it has this ripple effect. And if you can help business, 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 business here to grow and flourish or people to grow and flourish, the ripple effect that that creates is mind-blowing. Mm, we really all have that opportunity. It doesn't matter whether you're in business or not. Um, you, We as people can change what we don't like. And as I said, the only person who can change things is you. Very wise. Um, yeah. <laughs> very, very true. Yes. What do you see is the biggest barrier for people to get to that place of, that we're talking about of being six star, of creating that yeah. effect? I fundamentally believe that it's mindset and I know for everything we do and navigate and we talk about this in Six Star as well is, is we need to work on mindset first because unless you are prepared to take that step into maybe the unknown, um, it could be fear that's holding you back, but mindset to uh, be willing to change, to make some shift in yourself because it, you know, I know I've been in education for years and years Unless that individual is ready and open to receive new information, absorb it and implement it through mindset, we're wasting our time. Mm. So I think a lot of people, yep, they're in overwhelm. They don't think they're good enough. Um, maybe they think, I'm going to stay small because it's okay. I, I, I can control this thing. And as you know, I'm a huge believer in business owners should not stay small. You've got to grow a team so you've got a protection moat around you so that when things go crazy, you've got a support team, whether it's your team or whether it's your advisory board, whatever. You've got turnover. You've got financial capability to work your way through it because stuff will happen. Days will go to mm. custard, absolutely. I think the biggest thing is mindset is that too many people have a closed mindset. They don't can't see the wood for the trees. They're not willing to take that step to change. And so is it the lowest one is commitment because, you know, you look at how many people, how many people you speak to, how many people I speak to and they say to me, I don't have time, I don't have the money. Mm. And I know if it's important enough to you, whatever this thing that you want to do, you will find the time, you will find the money. There's always a way, right? There is always a way. Uh, and so it starts up here. Mm. Mm. People have do to you think feel yeah, ah, uh, yes, and and we're all about you know how do we do things differently, and it just start yeah. it starts with mindset for sure. Yeah, how difficult do you see it uh, in today's world, today's society and business world for people to be six star? I think um, I think there's too much too much crap on the TV, too much crap on social media, and so you know people are spending so much time on these devices and looking. And they're, as I've said before, they're not surrounding themselves with the right people. They're not consciously, presently, yeah, you know, with presence, looking at, oh, well, that information isn't serving me. I'm going to unsubscribe from that. Making a decision to go, I don't actually need to listen to that. You know, so too many people complain about what's on the news. How about you don't watch it? Or how about you go find a source of news that actually is real and you feel confident that I'm, I'm going to manage my time on that and um, absorb the information that I need to proactively go and find books and yeah. podcasts and all those sort of things. I think all we can do, as I said, is one little step and create that, start doing that ripple. Uh, there are going to be people who won't want to go there. And that's just human nature, right? We can't change everybody's minds. But I think, you know, we just do one step at a time, continuing to talk this message and doing these podcasts, and we just do what we can to spread the word is, is all that we can do. Yeah, absolutely. Not everybody's going to hear. We're all at different stages of our evolution and our growth, our development, our journeys, and, you know, we're just here to help those who are at that point who recognise that, yeah, that they might be trapped, they might be in their fear bubble, they might be stuck by their own limitations, but they know 
there's something inside. Maybe they're listening to their gut. Maybe they're, they're getting those butterflies of fluttering when they hear you speak about what you've done. Um, mm. And hopefully these words are getting them excited yeah. and re- realise that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not mm. easy, is it? No, that, no, never said it was. Uh, it is hard, which is why it's so important to have the right people around you. Mm. you know, and I know I've got family and friends who are not business owners and so they don't get what I'm doing. So I understand that. They give advice with the best of love to me, but I also know I don't need to take that on board. Thank you. That's cool. Great. I'm just going to continue on. So I then find other people who can support me, six star, for example. And so, you know, I think a lot of lot of people go and ask the wrong people for advice or listen to the wrong people of their advice because you what you've got a quality check is are they an expert on the subject? Do they have authority in it? You know, should I be listening to them? And if it's if it's your aged aunt or some bloke who's you played football with or went to school with, and he's um, is a banker, and you're an entrepreneur, what what credibility has he got? And too many people don't quality check that. Yeah, it's it's so true. Um, yeah. It, look, it, to be to be successful, you've got to be resilient, and you certainly yeah. learned that resilience very early on in your career. Thanks, yeah. Dad, for that forcing yeah. me to ring up every branch manager. My gosh, I would have been mortified very, myself. Very um, but good on you, and what an amazing, amazing lesson and experience to have. Um, I want to talk now about competition because, uh-huh. for me, one of the biggest reasons, one of the things that drives business is competition obviously mm-hmm. it's it's very you know by nature there's competition everywhere and yeah. it's inbuilt i believe it's 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 ingrained in our society and we see it in our media we see it in ads social media we see it everywhere there's this drive to play one off each other and all of that mm-hmm. and the last couple of years especially since six star has developed one thing that you and I have talked a lot about and we believe in is collaboration. And that goes against the old ways of doing business, which is to compete. And I'd love to get your thoughts on what competition is to you, maybe an example of how you've, you know, done things differently. Um, Yeah. Really happy to. Uh, Look, I think think collaboration is the mother of all growth strategies that every business should implement and it shouldn't be the only growth strategy, but it definitely should be one. Um, when, I, when I look at competition, I think of opportunity. Um, and so as I've shared with you previously and I'll share now, is that the reason that I built this business to $30 million in such a short space of time was a number of things. I knew the industry intimately. It was, as I said, a registered training organisation, and there were a number of small players like me and some large national and global companies out there. There's always has been an enormous amount of funding that is available in Australia here. So one of the strategies I thought, well, all right, I don't have the funding. I've got the licence, don't have the funding. How about I go and knock on the door of some of the largest RTOs in the country? Because what I knew was I knew the industry, I knew what their challenges were because they were so large, they couldn't pivot their business quickly. They couldn't do the things that I could do. And so I prepared myself. I knew how I was going to do it, I knew what I was going to do, and I know, knew what the value add for them was because it was going to fill a gap for them. So I knocked on the doors of, uh, I think at one point I had five arrangements with five of the largest competitors in the country, all who had the funding that I needed, and I knocked on their door. And was it easy? No. I probably knocked on the door of 10 and got five with persistence. But, you know, what I said was, I want to collaborate with you. I want to enrol people into our RTO deliver our programs, this is what we're going to do, this is the value add we're going to give our customers. And so my product was seven times the price of the standard qualification in the country. They thought that was intriguing. Um, I had lots of other value adds that that made it worth way more than that. And they were not in a position to do something like this. Um, So what I ended up doing was I'll knock on the door, make it really easy for you. You can see everything that I do. I give you full access to systems. And I will do it as though I'm a division of you. And all you've got to do is receive a file from me each month and process it. And we will make it really easy for you. And I'll give you a decent share of the pie. And so the money was secondary because they went, we can't do what Joanne's going to do. She's doing something very differently. And we're very fortunate. We managed to get 
everybody's heard of Tony Robbins, and I managed to get him to endorse our diplomas at all his conferences here in Australia, and he loved them. He was a bit hard, a little bit hard to control, making sure he didn't breach any compliance requirements, but we, we did that. He was a great supporter, and so these RTOs were going, wow, this is pretty neat. We've got a global um, you know, motivational speaker to support this. And so that worked incredibly well because I made it easy for them and I knew the industry. I could do make it make it super simple, give them full access and clarity to it. And that's worked incredibly well. So even today um, in Navigate, where business coaches and mentors, I proactively go and speak to other business mentors and coaches because they do what they do. I've got a whole bunch of education programs. And so I speak to them and say, how about you be the best coach you possibly can? You don't need to teach people. You don't want to teach people what it is to run a business. That's what I do. And I have programs for that. So it makes sense to me to go and speak to them and say, how about I license you our content so that you've got a framework from which to work from and you do the, be the best mentor and coach you possibly can by helping them to think expansively and build and grow their business or their career. Mm-hmm. And a very, you know, some of them go, oh, no, you're my competitor. Well, that's fine. Move on. Mm-hmm. Don't take it personally, Joanne. Move on to the next one, knock on the next door. And so, you know, competitors for me, we, we all don't do exactly the same, invariably. There's some that are similar, but when you've got a product that you've created out of your own resources, brain, heart, the way that you approach it, I think there's nothing but great opportunity to collaborate with them. The other thing that you can do is, well, there's a tender out there I want to apply for. I do this. Oh, Av, how about you and I, you talk to customers, you're about business growth, let's join forces and put a joint tender in. That's that's a great way to collaborate and that you present an opportunity to, an, a, to a business that's solving a much bigger problem that if you looked at it in isolation of your own services, oh, no, I can't apply for that. Well, if you can't and you know you can do part of it, go find somebody who can do the other part and have a conversation, say, let's do this together, mm. provided values purpose and all those things align because otherwise it's going to be really hard. Yeah. Back to that checklist, making Absolutely. sure that you get the right pe- people to align with. You bet. Um, just for those people listening who w- sort of got lost or, or there's a lo- an open loop when you gave the yep. example of you partnering with those big RTOs, what was the reason that you wanted to partner with them in the first place? The, the reason I wanted to partner with them was, I had a program. I needed the funding, and I didn't have right. it. So it was, that from, it was the go- the, from the government. Yeah. The government. Funding. So I, had an, I had an application in with the with the government, and it was going to take two years. And I went, "All right, well, that's a barrier. I don't want to wait two years. What's mm-hmm. another way I can get access to the funding?" Yeah. And so for me, it was because we were talking to business owners. Always were, you know, always been dealing with business owners all the way along. So at the end of finishing our program, they get the diploma of business, they got a website, social media strategy, accounting um, strategy, um, a marketing campaign and a financial planning done for them, all part of a diploma of business. So that was a great outcome for them with the business plan. And so no RTO had been doing that. So I knew it was something very different. That's why we charge seven times more. And the other, my RTO partners went, wow, well, we can have a slice of that. We can both win from that. And for me, the purpose was being able to deliver this program to business owners that they got something, a qualification, which wasn't as important to them as all the other pieces. Mm. It helped those businesses not fail. Mm. And so I had to find a mechanism. Well, how do I help them pay for it? Mm. The funding. How can Mm. I make it work? Knock on doors of RTOs who had the funding. Just lo- I just love that story. So it's yeah. so good. Your your tenacity since the eighteen years of age has just <laughs> you know really been such yeah. a massive asset. You know, and and it's it so inspiring, yeah. right? You. Yeah, and I hope I hope everyone listening is has gotten some inspiration from your journey and your stories and and the way yeah. that you approach things and what you've learned and what you've done consistently, mm-hmm. which is doing you do things differently. Just doing it differently. And I and I don't want people to think, oh, wow, I can't get to 30 million. Well, that was unexpected for me. I will say to you, I didn't see, I had the plans and the cash flow forecast done. But I want people to realise that, you know, when you do think differently, so much is possible. Mm-hmm. So even if it's just thinking differently, well, how do I package my product that it's a beautiful experience? 
You know, it could be something really simple and small like that. I remember years ago I used to get shoes made by an organisation called Shoes of Praise. Sadly, they don't exist anymore. But it was such an experience. The shoes would arrive in a black box. You'd open it. Everything was wrapped up in black tissue paper. They had photos of my shoes sitting on the top. And the photo was to stick on the box when you put it in your cupboard so you knew what was in the shoe box. Really clever. Mm. And then in a little bag were all the things to clean your shoes, to make oh. the shoes comfortable, it was, and a personalised note. If they made an error with the shoes, you could send the entire thing back and they would replace it at no cost. Now, that was an amazing doing things differently for a pair of shoes. Yeah. And that always stuck with me um, about the beautiful experience of enjoying something. So, you know, business owners who might be listening to this or, you know, people who are listening to this, if you've got a, if you've got a product that you offer, what if you did it differently? What if you packaged it differently or the experience you could escalate just from a simple change mm. that you become memorable. Yeah, that's. Oh, there's so many. There's so many opportunities. Um, again, if we can just get outside that little fear bubble or that comfort zone, yeah. and and I, I want to say the status quo. You know, we get so caught up in habit. You know, the day to day and staying in the same lane doing the mm. same things over and over again and forgetting like you had at, at the height of that business growth before mm. liquidation six years ago, forgetting why you're actually doing what you're doing. Exactly, yeah. And I think, you know, fear is a really good thing to have. Mm. Um, I, heard, I was on a meeting the other day. <laughs> I love this. Somebody came up with fun fear. Was it in one of our meetings the other day? I think it yeah. was. Yeah, and, and the thought of like I hate roller coasters. So the example was getting on a roller coaster and doing this thing. That would that is terrifying fear for me. Uh, but I really like the concept of fun fear, and I've shared that a few times since I've been you know various conversations that I've had. And I think you know what? If you can, a little bit of fear helps you not to not move forward, but to move forward with focus and mm -hmm. care and strategy. That is a good thing. So don't think, oh, I'm fearful, so it's got to be a bad thing because mm. it's mm. not not necessarily. No. no. Yeah. It's just it's just the new. The fear comes because exactly. you're doing something that's Fear of the different. unknown. Fear of the unknown. Exactly. Mm. exactly. Yeah. Um, as we bring this in to a close, I can see we're almost at the top of the hour, Joanne. Um, what, it goes fast. <laughs> it does go fast, gosh. It's um, – <laughs> It's just so much. I could keep talking to you. You know that. Yeah. Um, what gems or what I'd love you to share with our audience, perhaps one or two practical things they can do um, mm. in their business, because I know you are full of these kind of things because <laughs> of your experience. What would you yeah. like to share? Well, I think one of the first things, as I said to you, the first thing that you've got to do to be ready for receiving your information is to work on you. So, you know, for me, it's, um, and I spoke again, I spoke about this yesterday, is that I have the ritual, not the habit. So I want to just be clear about this. A habit for me is something that you do remotely without a lot of thought. You just do it. You brush your teeth a certain way, you don't think about it. You should, but you don't. Um, so I do things from a ritual perspective because that means that I'm present and I'm aware. So every morning, like I know what I need to do to set myself up for success every day. Uh, regardless, is I get up at five, uh, we walk the dogs around the water at Sanctuary Cove, and there is not, a, with my husband, not a lot of conversation because that is where I can get myself ready. I'm thinking about the day, what happened yesterday, what I'm going to do moving forward, and it's just a nice grounding thing for me to see them. And there's your puppy. <laughs> um, and so that work, that, that works incredibly well for me. And then, you know, get ready, and I'm at the desk by about 7 o'clock. What I've started doing in the last couple of months is the first hour of my day is learning. So there's some programs that I've been doing. So I make an effort for me to do my learning, whether it's listening to my books, doing some online program. So so focusing on me for the first hour. That's what works for me. Everybody could do it in a slightly different pattern. But I know when I don't do that, the day doesn't feel as productive, as joyful, I, I procrastinate, I don't get things done. It, these things just set me up. 
So what I would say to people, like I'm not necessarily a paper journaling person. I visualize a lot of things, do that in my meditation, so on and so forth. So what I um, would recommend for anyone listening to this is really ponder on what is it you need to do to set yourself up for success each day? You know, and some people will say, well, I'd do that in the afternoon of the end of my day to be ready for the next day. Perfectly fine. But do you consciously find a ritual, find a ritual that you know is going to serve you well to think differently for the day to come? Uh, for me, that and everything else, and I think, you know, the only other thing I can suggest to you is find the right people, find the right tribe, hang out with the right people, and, you know, as you know, I've been in learning for such a long time, just don't stop. Look, I'm 60 and I'm continue. Like, who wants to stop learning? No, I, I don't. And I, I, do, I will say I got this gem from my mum. My mum is 91, still active and all that sort of stuff. She actually a few months ago taught herself how to do patchwork quilting. And I went, really? I went, that's incredible. Like these little things, shapes that she puts together, and she would spend the entire day trying to work out a pattern. And I said, how do you feel? She said, I'm quite exhausted because it hurt my brain. Uh, <laughs> but I went, wow, what a great <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Yeah. Um, just thought, 91, and she's yeah. teaching herself something new because she wanted to know how to do it. That's gold. So You're right. The day, the day I stop learning is the day I die. I mean, we're not Absolutely. here just to sit still. It's not It's not part no. of the human experience. Yeah. And don't be mm. arrogant enough to think, well, I've been there, done that. I've got the qual. I've got the yeah. experience. I've done the years. Ugh, I call BS on that mm. because it doesn't change. It doesn't stop, you know. Yep. Technology is changing so, constantly. Mm. And I will never say I'm the expert in anything. Mm. I've got a lot of experience, mm. a lot of things that I can share not to do, mm. how to do. If I don't know how to do it, I go find out. Mm. Mm. absolutely oh such gold thank you thanks for your uh thank wisdom you. and and learned experience that you've shared it's just it's awesome i'm looking forward to listening to this one again um yeah yeah just want to thank you so much uh i'm i'm so grateful that you're in my circle so i just oh, want to you know put that out there you are one of my trusted advisors and i'm yeah. so grateful for you in my life and having you in six star is, is a joy so oh i love it it's we're all we're, we all think the same way but i also mm. love that we challenge one another and, yeah and that's what we need right yes you don't want, you don't want yes people no not at all you thought not of that oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> let's try that <laughs> yeah i love it thank you so much you have a wonderful day and i will speak to you very soon Thank you. Thanks.